Oh, uh, amen. We just thank God, man. Four. Hey, dig Bob. Amen. Oh, God. Praise God. Amen. That's all right, brother. <laughs> amen. We just thank God, amen, once again uh, for all that he, amen, has uh, has done, that he's doing, that he is going, that he is going to do. Um, first, you know, God, hear my life. Thank him for, amen, my wife, Tina. Amen. Thank you for Evangelist Lair. God bless you, my sister. Amen. amen. Uh, great woman of God. And we thank God for the deacons. Amen. Deacon Van in his absence. Thank God for Deacon Jones. And Mother Van, we're absolutely thank God for her. All the trustees, each and every one of you is in the house of the Lord. Amen. On today. Amen. 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 Beautiful day in the Lord once again. Day in which he has made. And of course, we will rejoice and be glad. Be glad in it. Today, we're going to be taking a look in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Um. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, as verses 1 through 27. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Here we're going to be dealing with the spiritual gifts, the body of, the body of Christ. So it's entitled, The Spiritual Gifts and the Body of Christ. Once again, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 27. Amen. We'll open in prayer and then we'll get right into what God has in store. Dear God, we just thank you, God, for this day. Once again, we ask, oh God, that you may just, just use us, God, and uh, please, God, forgive us of all sins, God, that we have committed. And and we just thank you, God, for hearing us today. Yes, Lord. Use us once again and yes. just have your way in this place. Yes. Bless us, oh God. Yes, Lord. Spirit of the living God, yes. fall afresh on, on us. Yes, Lord. We need you. Yes, Lord. Please do guide us and lead us right now. Yes, Lord. We give you all praise and all glory. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. In 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 27. Today we'll look at 1 Corinthians 12. We will see how Paul addresses the Corinthian church regarding spiritual gifts and the body of Christ. Uh, up to this point in the Corinthian church, they have been wielding their newly found gifts from the spirit of God to, in effect, glorifying their gifts in the flesh. Uh, so Paul needed to correct and instruct them on the purpose and use of their spiritual gifts. Uh, he will also use the human body as a comparison to the body of Christ to teach us the importance of each member and how dependent we are on the Holy Spirit. Uh, he will stress the importance of the members uh, the function of each member and the dependence on each member. And so that's what we're going to be looking at on, on today. Let me ask you a question, church. And, and, and everyone should have a resounding yes. And maybe if there is any no's and hopefully today as we go through this passage of scripture today to help us and everything. Let me ask you this right here. Do you believe in spiritual gifts? Amen. 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 For those of you who are saved, let me ask you this question. Do you have a spiritual gift? Amen. 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 Praise God. And, and that's what this is all about. That's what this passage is all about. We all have a spiritual gift. Maybe, just maybe we're not operating that gift because we feel as though we don't have a gift. But through this lesson today, we pray that we're able to receive what God has for us and know that God has blessed us all, amen, with a spiritual gift. Uh, we'll find out that not only has he, uh, uh, has he gifted each and every one of us with a gift, but he's also, amen, gifted many, amen, whoever he so desired with several gifts. Yes. Uh, so here we go. And as Paul starts out in this chapter, wanting not only the Corinthian church to be cognizant of, but any reader not to be ignorant of spiritual gifts. Uh, it says right there in verse number verse number one in first Corinthians 12. Here's what it says. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, take a listen to this. I would not have you. What is that other word right there? Ignorant. Ignorant. Basically meaning not knowing. He want them to know. He want us to know about spiritual, spiritual gifts. Uh -huh. Paul in his letters names three things he does not want Christians to be ignorant of. Um, he says, don't be ignorant of God's plan for Israel. In Romans eleven twenty five, 25, it says this, for I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, 
lest you should be wise in your own opinion that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Uh, he also made mention of that in 1 Corinthians 12, 1, as we just read. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. And thirdly, he did it in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. He said this right here. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, or basically those who have died, lest, any, uh, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. So Paul wants his readers, wants those who are going to read what he writes, what God has given him, what the Spirit of God has given him. He wants us to know, to be cognizant of, to understand. So he goes, amen, to, to links trying to explain uh, what different issues are. Uh, we're going to look here in, in uh, this first, in this uh, chapter 12 right here, verses 1 through 11 is going to talk about spiritual gifts. Uh, in verses 1 through 3, we're going to look at a need to know. He says, I do not want you to be ignorant. So there is a need uh, to know. The other verses in 4 through 6 talk about uh, the Trinity at work. We'll take a look at that. And as we go on, we'll outline these right here. In verses 1 through 3, it says once again, in verse 1, now concerning spiritual gifts. He lays that out. Now, whenever we see in our Bibles, uh, whenever we see in our Bibles the, uh, a word that's italicized, you know, italicize is like, it's kind of like leaning. You know, you know how you lean? I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Leaning on the Lord's side. I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Yeah, my wife's name is Eileen. <laughs> so, so, yeah. But what happens is that whenever we see a word that's italicized, meaning that that's the word in which we've been put in the Bible for a clarification. Let's say that we took that word gifts out and look how, look how it would read. Now concerning spiritual, brethren, well, as Paul continued to write throughout that particular chapter, we see that he's specifically talking about the gifts, spiritual gifts. So in turn, what the writer has done has put gifts in there so we can understand better what Paul is talking about or what the main theme uh, is for this section. So he goes on. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that we that, that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, uh, even as ye were led. Wherefore, verse three, I give you to understand. He goes on that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse or anathema. He goes on and says, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Here's what he's saying. He's addressing all those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Those folk who have been who are saved. And that's who he's addressing. He's ensuring and letting us know that those of us or those people, a man cannot turn around and call a man uh, Jesus accursed, nor uh, can he, can he say Jesus is Lord unless they are saved? Because what you're saying is that Jesus is Lord of your life. You have surrendered to him. He's in charge. He's master of your life. He goes on, and that was a, a need to know, and we do need to know these things. The Corinthian church needed to know uh, these things. He goes on to verse 4. Now there are diversities, or another word for that would be various kinds of gifts. But, he says, the same, uh, capital S, y'all, spirit. Meaning that if it's capital S, then he's talking about the spirit of God. So we can't get it uh, mixed up here. So he goes on and says, okay, now there are di diversities or different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. So he let us know there is more than one kind uh, of gift. He goes on and says that, and there are differences of administrations or ministries but the same Lord and there are diversities of operations but it's the same God which worketh who worketh all in all let's take a quick look at that once again and you'll see right here you'll see the Trinity as Paul writes it and it's pretty slick really you know it's how the spirit of the Lord guided Paul he writes it in there you know the Trinity is what God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Look what he says right here in verse number four. 
the same what? Capital S, spirit. That's got spirit. And verse 5, he says the same, capital L, Lord, Christ. And then there are diversities of operations, but it's the same, look at this, capital G, God, which worketh all in all. He, he, he pushes, he puts this in us and lets us know that, look, this is godly directed. This is not Paul trying to try to put things together and like that. But this is the spirit guiding him as he writes this to this church. And, and because God is always centered in the mindset of his believer. He goes on right here. As he as he goes on right here in the verse, uh, verse seven, uh, verse six. And there are diversities. I read that operations, but it's the same God which worketh all. No, look at seven. But look at right here. The man. This is important here. The manifestation. And let, let me let you know what a manifestation is. Hmm. Anybody know what manifestation is? Know what a manifest? How something a manifest is kind of like a listing, right? A manifestation would be the list or what like that. But also, it would also be the appearing, or we can see it in the works. All right, so we can see the different definitions that you can get out of this. So when it says the manifestation, you can see something at at work. He says, "Look, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit." Look at this, with all. And I want to also point this out right here as Paul writes this. He says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit all. Now, when we're talking about this manifestation of the spirit uh, to every man, once again, here's what we're saying. Here's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying right here, and I'm not saying what he's saying he is. This is exactly what he's saying. Every man, all people. Those who are born again will have a gift, amen, from the Spirit. He lays it out right there. And not only is he talking to the Corinthian church right here telling them this, but he's also telling us and, and speaking to the reader and letting us know that, look, if you are a child of God, then you have the Spirit of God. Not only do you have the Spirit of God, but you have a gift. And the gift, I'm going to let you know, it's not yours. It is not for your glory, it's for his. So therefore, when we have the gift, that means that we have to operate that gift in such a way that God is getting the glory. Amen. He goes on. Look at verse. Look at verse number eight. He goes on with verse number eight, um, read eight through ten, because now we're going to get into the actual gifts. First Corinthians twelve verses eight through eight through ten says this right here: For to one is given by the capital S Spirit, and which is again the Holy Spirit, the word of wisdom. Now, as we go to this, I'm not going to stop for all of them because we understand what these different uh, elements or these different gifts are. Word of wisdom. Something we can, we can grow by. To another, the word of what? Knowledge. Knowledge. By the same spirit. Now, once again, it's the same spirit that is giving amen, us these gifts. Number nine, verse nine. To another, faith. Did you know that faith is a gift? You see, so therefore, look, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healings by the same spirit. That's a gift. Look, to another the working of miracles, y'all, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits. Basically being able to, you ever, have you ever heard this one the saying that some people say that, that I, I read you? Uh, they, 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 they see you, you know, they, they, they know you. Discerning of a spirit is being able to understand and see what God is saying regarding someone or what's happening with them. Goes on and says, to another, divers kinds. Once again, y'all see the italicized right there that helps us out. There were different kinds of tongues. Now, the thing is, is that not so much the tongue that's in your mouth, but a tongue as in language. So different kinds. OK, so therefore the spirit of God will give those. Have you ever known or if you all ever heard about heard of linguistics or or someone who can speak many languages? My God, that has got to be a gift. I mean, we can barely uh, uh, master one. 
<laughs> and I would say English, <laughs> you see? So therefore, for someone to, to be able to master multiple languages, that, my God, my God. That, God has blessed folk. A lot of times they don't know God has blessed them. And they can use that for God's glory. There are missionaries going out different places and stuff, and, and they got to get Bibles into different ones, and, and certain Bibles are not written in that language, so somebody has to decode or, or translate that language or the Bible to that particular language and stuff. That's a gift that God has given someone. We need that. Not only that, but also when people are, when, uh, that the Spirit of God will give someone, amen, that particular gift when needed or when necessary. Uh, if, if he sets you somewhere. And you don't have a clue about anything. All you know is Jesus. <laughs> All you know is you don't know the language. But amen, the spirit of God, amen, will be able to deliver a message to whomever he so desire. That's what happened in Acts chapter number two, y'all. Uh, when the people came out and, and heard, amen, those, uh, those disciples of God, and some disciples, those followers of God, speaking those different languages, their languages. And they have never left that town. You know, so... He goes on and says right here in verse number, he says, now in that, but the different kinds of tongues. Now, this is what's very important right here, y'all. To another, what is this right here? The interpretation of tongues or languages. So it lets us know that if God is going to bless you with the language or with the tongue, then also then it is, amen, it is, it, it should be able to be interpreted. And God can give someone the gift of interpretation. Amen. You see, so therefore, these gifts that God listed, uh, no way shall we say that God cannot do, amen, what he says that he can do. Uh, I believe what the Bible says. Now, now, the question is, well, I haven't heard nobody like that. Well, I haven't seen nobody uh, uh, automatically uh, get, get uh, uh, healed instantly either. So therefore, so therefore, that means that it doesn't, it's, it's not happening. No, it's not saying that. What God does, he does it on his time frame when he does it. Who he want to do it with in regards to giving them the gift. Uh, so, and the interpretation and or the tongues and or anything else that he has regarding, regarding gifts. But look at verse number 11 it says, but all these worketh and worketh mean continual. Now we see ETH on the end of the word is continual. All these, he says, worketh that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man. Once again, here we go. What is that word? Uh huh. As he, as he will. Severally as he will. So the spirit of God is in charge. So he has a mission. He has a job. He knows what he's supposed to do. And he gives the gifts accordingly as, as needed or necessary uh, when it's fitting. Uh, speaking of, we may say that we may not have the gift in this particular church of a certain thing. Well, at this particular time, if that gift is not here, meaning that that gift is not needed here at this particular time. Now the thing is that, but we do have the gift of something else. Well, that means that the Holy Spirit uh, desire or have it whereas this church was needed for that particular gift at this time so God uses his people the gifts aren't just going to just appear and fall on the ground the gifts are coming through his people and in order for his gifts to be utilized his people have to surrender to be used by God now let's, let's go on he says look look at verse number 12 now he goes on uh, and, and, uh, and talks to us And talks to us uh, as we talk about the body of Christ. But uh, these nine spiritual gifts have already been enumerated. And of course, I want to tell also share what is that that is not including the seven mentioned in verse number 28. So those gifts that we just talked about are not, are not all inclusive. And uh, so no one knows the total gifts that God has amen, for for his people. Uh, no one knows that we can we can count how many gifts we find in the Bible as mu as often as we can. But God, a man can give gifts, whatever he so desires, whatever gift it may be. Uh, so no one really knows the total number of gifts that God that God has for for his people. 
uh, verse 11. Verse 11, I'm just going to read what I have here. It says that the Spirit will distribute the gifts as he sees fit. So if your church is in need of gifts, uh, of the, the gifts the Spirit will provide it. One way to know is when the Spirit manifests a gift in an individual or individuals. Then we would know that that gift is by the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Now Paul goes on and illustrates how those gifts just mentioned, when we talked about, are similar to how the physical body functions. Not to the Lord over them, but to allow each to do what they are called or equipped to do. Let's take a read at these verses in 12 through 27. Look, it says, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. And I want us to really pay attention to certain words that Paul wrote in these verses right here uh, because of the fact that he once again as we as we stated in the previous verse in verse number number uh verses four through through six we said that Paul had uh has the Trinity listed there. Now as he goes on Paul is now kind of somewhat switching if we got to catch it to talk to us about oneness. Now look he says right here in 12 once again for as the body is one and hath what Many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body. So we can only have one body. Uh, it, uh, it says so also is Christ. So now he pulls Christ in to show that likewise Christ is one one body in Christ. Uh, if we keep that keep that mindset as he goes on, we'll be able to see what he talks about when, he, when he's talking about the body. Uh, it says, for by one spirit, in which he laid out for us already previously, one spirit are we all, look at this right here, we're baptized, and we know what baptized is, right? Baptized, uh, from what we know naturally, we go to the water. Take me to the water. Uh, Y'all yeah, don't want to sing that thing. Yeah, take me to the, yeah, to be baptized, you know, none but the, uh -huh. none but the, right. Yeah, that's right. Y'all did great saying now, y'all. Watch out now. Amen. That's absolutely right. So what happens is that now, sometimes when we look at baptized, that's automatically what we think. The water. But look what happens here. 13 says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. What? Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, or basically slave or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. What he's talking about baptizing into that spirit, he's talking about a spiritual baptism, y'all, not the water. Amen. So he's talking about now, what, what do you mean about the spiritual baptism? Does that mean that, that I, I have to, uh, 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 as soon as I get saved, uh, now I'm looking for to be baptized in the spirit somehow and... I'm going to do like uh, Acts chapter number two and and wait on a, a mighty Russian wind uh, come through the windows, even though our windows aren't open. Am I going to wait for, uh, you know, something, uh, whatever it might be and everything? And uh, what, what, what exactly? So what happens is that a lot of times we go off of what someone else has done. Our mindset is closed. It's boxed. We say this is the way it happens. I have us to know that when you're talking about the baptism in the spirit, the Bible already explicitly lets us know that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it is not a natural thing. It is a spiritual thing. And because it's spiritual, it's being baptized into Christ. A spiritual baptism. We have now been adopted in the family of God. We've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You have now the spirit of God. The only way in which we can connect to God is by his spirit. The only way that we can be drawn to God is by his spirit. So therefore, baptizing in the spirit is being in Christ. So, when we, so, so now he's talking about this. For by one spirit are we all baptized into the one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink in that one spirit. If we're all waiting on tongues, my brothers and sisters, y'all going to continue to be waiting. 
Is that a sign of their spiritual baptism? Well, it was for Acts chapter number two. But evidently lets us know in Acts chapter number two, I'm going to tell y'all what. There was nobody that was mute during that time. Meaning someone that could not talk. At that time, there were certain things. So therefore, God has his ways, his avenues to do what he's going to do. So we just cannot focus on one particular way in which God operates. We read already regarding the gifts. There are many ways in which we're going to exercise the gifts that God has given different ones. So. Likewise, preaching, y'all. Ain't nobody going to preach the same way. Ain't nobody going to teach the same way. So we all individuals and he gives us, amen, all these different ways of doing what he's going to do, amen, to, to give him the glory. Amen. He goes on, look, look at verse number, uh, verse number, what's that? 14. Thank you, sister. Evangelist, he'd be keeping me up here. I should so you straight, right? Thank you, sister. Right. Look, for the body is not one member, once again, but many. If the foot, now here's how Paul continues to lay it out for us so we can really understand what he's talking about, y'all. So every one of us in here, we came in here with a body, with a physical body. We all came in, uh, you know, we, we got we got legs to walk on. If we we're able to walk on it, we got hands, we got arms, we got we got eyes to see. Some of us got four of them. Uh, but, you know, we have everything that God has, has, has given us for right now, whatever it might be. So this is the body that we have. Us, physical body. Now look, he goes, look, look at verse number uh what's that? 15. If the foot shall say, and we all know what a foot is, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? So what happens is that the foot began to look at the hand. And the hand look at the foot. The hand said, I'm doing more than you, foot. The foot looking up and saying, You sure are. And so what happens, you got, we have this, got to have this battle with it. You know, now we can understand how we have a battle in our mind sometime. When we begin to look at other folk and we look at ourselves. But now we see individually we have our own issues. And so it's in the hand and the foot. Why are they going against each other? They have to operate together. They have to work together. Amen. Because here's what the foot the foot got, got word from the central nervous system saying, look, look, the hand y'all better work together. Mm -hmm. You know, if not, I'm gonna. So now the foot said, okay, gotcha. Foot said, look, I'm not I'm not gonna say I'm less than somebody. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I'm less than a hand. And then the foot said, look, hand, where you wanna go, what's gotta happen? Yeah. I gotta take you. Uh -huh. I gotta take you. And so what happens is that God uses our look. He says, the foot shall say, because I'm not a hand, am I not in the body? Is it therefore not in the body? Look at 16. And if the ear, look at the ear. Y'all got the ear? Y'all got the ear, right? If the ear shall say, because I am not the eye. Here we go, y'all. Ear and eye got issues now. I am not in the body. Is it therefore not of the body? The eye and the ear. No, what is it? Yeah, the eye and the ear, you know. Working together, the seeing, hearing, you know, working together. So, hey, look, we got to do this thing because, you know, look, not one is not better than the other. One is not better than the other. Amen. He goes on and says, look at something. If the whole body were an eye, let's say the whole body was an eye. Y'all remember that? Uh, what's it? Uh, uh, yeah, a, a cyclone. That's on. That's on sci-fi, right? That's on the TV and stuff. That's like a big old eye. What can an eye do? See, <laughs> you know, right? Okay, now everybody break out their fifty dollar. I mean, that one dollar. I don't even know what's on the on the back of where there's an eye back there somewhere. I don't even know what bill it is anyway. So, but but uh, look, goes on and says it's right here, and, and just get the eye out of our mind. The eye we have is right here, you know, and the ear we have is, is right here. Uh, I'll be watching TV too, that sci-fi stuff also. And look, he says uh, in 17, if the whole body were an eye, were not the, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Now it comes to the nose. Y'all see different things that's happening? The ear, the eye, the nose. 
you know, all these functions, and we all got to have those functions, or if we don't have them, we sure do want them. You know, if we have them and we lose it, we say, I sure do miss it. So while we have those different functions, we got to be satisfied and content and happy about God has given us, amen, the hearing, the seeing, and the smelling, and the foot and the hand and everything. Look, in 18, but now have God, look at this, right, set, set the members, every one of them in the body, how? As it pleased him. You know, we have a tendency of wanting to do things the way in which we want it. Yeah. Yes, I know we have gone well <laughs> way astray and said, look, this is the way I want my body. And because you said this is the way I want my body, we try to we try to fix it accordingly. You know, outside of the way God had already assigned our bodies. Uh, so we got to be careful, amen, uh, uh, on those. Look, it says how God has assigned it. That's what it says right here, how it had pleased him, the one who made us. Yes. 19 said, and if they were all one member, where were the body? So those different members that we have just can't separate themselves and say, look, uh, I got it going on. Hand can't say that. The foot can't say that. The, the, the ear can't say that. The eye can't say that. The smelling can't say that. And, you know, anything like that. The mouth be saying a whole lot of stuff, though. And that's why, the Holy, that's why we need the Holy Spirit. Uh, to tame, because no man can tame uh, that tongue, you know. Uh, so now it goes on and says right here in verse number twenty. But now are they many? Are there many members? Yet, but one body. We need the body, y'all, to keep things in order. Your body, keep things in order. Your body, the way God has it, amen, as, as, as it fits him, as it pleases him, the ear is where it should be, where it's supposed to be, nose, eyes, feet, hand, everything else. He goes on and says in 21, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble or weak are necessary. Don't count no part of your body out. Amen. Y'all have heard the story, and I think I've, I've said it before, not so much the story, but how a piano will play. A piano uh, uh, has this one finger, we call it the ring finger. Uh, it seems like it's, you know, uh, we probably just use it just for the ring, maybe. But a piano player uses that finger because it's helpful uh, in, in everything. And uh, as a matter of fact, in one of the in one of the prayers when we first get when we, when we got saved and had this had this class and we started talking about the hand, uh, how we are to pray uh, for for people, and then it started off how the little finger you pray for those that are that are less than those and uh, those that are uh, you know weak and those that are poor those that are, you pray for all of those. Uh, then the other finger, the ring finger, you pray for those that once again. Are uh, no the the the, uh, the the little finger. Pray for those who are far far from far away from you, foreign lands, the missionaries, and everything else. Then the ring finger. You pray for those who are weak, those in the hospitals, those in nursing homes, those are those that are uh, infirm, those that are like that. Uh, you know, and then you have the tall finger right there. I uh, pray for those uh those that are uh. Uh, the government people, you know, president, uh, those that are of those in authority. And then you pray for this right here. Yeah, do y'all know what this finger is? I ain't pointing y'all way. Y'all know what this finger is? Uh, yeah, but po the pointy finger, who uses that mostly? Who? <laughs> I know you probably going to say, hey, look, a parent maybe or something like that. But teachers, <laughs> teachers, don't you do that? Uh, I, I don't. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've been in school, but you know, uh, we pray for our educators. Pray for those who are teaching. Those, who, uh, you know, things like that. And then the thumb, the thumb is closest to you. You pray for those who are close to you, including yourself. Last of all, pray for yourself. The hand of prayer. Uh, so it just lets us know to keep so many and everybody so involved in. And praying, praying for for others. So if you if you don't know what to pray for, break out the hand. Boom, 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 boom. And before you know it, you praying, you just praying, you're praying, you're praying. You know, but that's, that's all we got to do. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. 
Praying on the Lord's side. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. Praying on the Lord's side. That was a song about the Lord's side. I lean, I lean, I lean, I lean. Amen. I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. I dance, I dance, I dance, I dance. All on the Lord's side. But here, we go on. It says right here in verse number 23. He says, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, Upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncommonly parts uh, have more abundant comeliness. For our comely part, or for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered, or what is that word? Compose the body together. God put it all together. Having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. That there should be no schism or division in the body. Y'all hand and foot, y'all behave. Ear and eyes behave. Smelling and whatever the other issue was, behave. So it'd be no division in the body. But that the members should have the same care one for another. The same care. One for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. And Paul caps it off in verse 27 and says, now you are the body of Christ. After he explained to them their body and the different divisions or the different schisms and the different uh, uh, separations they are in our body, how we deal with our own body. But he says that now you are the body of Christ. Now that should that should have sunk in to the reader now. And then he says, and members in particular or individually. Meaning that now we understand. First of all, we have gifts. And he gave gifts to the church. And the only way he gave gifts to the church is by giving the gifts to his people. Now that he's given it to this people, to the body, then he says, you are the body of Christ. So therefore, what God has given us, then he has given us for each other to him. So God can get the glory, not for ourselves, but for God. Amen. So next time that we think about a body, automatically we know that God has given the body gifts. He has given you a gift. If you don't know what your gift is, seek God. Don't ask somebody else because they'll tell you what their gift is and, and uh, you know, you probably never find out what your gift is because now you're probably going to focus on what other folk doing. Don't focus on what other folk doing, what their gift is. God bless them. Assist if you can, but your gift is what God has given you. And, if he, and when he has given you that gift, it's a gift that you can't operate. Not only did he give you the gift, but he gave you the know-how. Because his spirit does it all. Seek him. If you don't know what your gift is. I know everybody probably focus on these big old uh, or, or gifts in which people can see maybe. Uh, well, you know, teaching and preaching and uh, musicians and, uh, you know, different. But there are so many other gifts that God has for the church. That we, that we operate. And you know the thing is. You may already be operating in your gift. And you don't even know it. And once he tells you. Once it comes into your, into your spirit. The gift. You'll see that I've been doing this what? All along. Because it's so smooth. And God is getting the glory. But nobody have recognized it. And told me that's a gift. As long as you know your gift. Good. Because if somebody else find out about it, who knows what will happen? Trust God. 
He'll give you what you need. And if he's he giving it to you, he's giving it to the church. And church benefits God get the glory. And that's how it works. And that's what Paul is telling the Corinthian church. He's telling the Corinthian church, y'all got to get it together now. All y'all around there speaking in tongues and can none, jumping around there, shouting and stuff, which is cool. But he said, hey, look, there's got to be some order going on. And it's got to be done right. So if you're given a gift, learn how to use it. How am I going to learn? Get in his word. Allow the spirit to guide you. You see? Uh, so he's given all of us a gift. So just step out in the gift that God has given you. Even if someone else has the same gift and you find out that's your gift, evidently we need more than one of those particular gifts in this church. Step out in it. Whatever it might be. And once you find out, oh, I did the wrong thing, don't worry, it's okay. Step back. And get the gift and use the gifts. Utilize the gift that God has given you. Amen. There are gifts of help. Gifts of administration. All kinds of gifts that God has given the church. Amen. Continue to seek him. Amen. And he'll guide you. He'll lead you. Amen. And give you just what you need. But not only you, but also the church. So what happens we, we're dependent on one another. Just like the hand and the foot and everything. We're not individuals. We are not lone rangers. We're together. We're a body. One body, many members. That's what we are. Because we've got to work together. Because if we don't work together, it means we're working apart. If we're working apart, the enemy has come in, there's a vision, there's schism, and there's everything else. The only way to get rid of that stuff is to close the divide by coming together and working together for the glory of God. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you, God, for your word. Spiritual gifts and the body of Christ. Thank you, God, for how you allow Paul to share this message to the Corinthian church. Yes. And in turn, we were able to really see the motive behind the writing and Amen. how Paul laid it out. Not to down the people, not to denigrate them, not to make them feel bad, but to let them know, yes, you have a gift. But there's a way in operating in that gift for you to get the glory, God. So, God, we thank you, God, for your word. And, and God, through it, we pray that we are able to receive, God, what you have for us. Understanding, God, that, that each and every one of us have, have a gift to operate in. But, God, we need your power. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. To be able to step out, to be able to work in that gift, to give you the glory. Yes, God, some of us may have been blinded in that, in that gift and we really don't know. God, we pray that, that you would open up our eyes of understanding in that particular gift, God, yes, to be able to share, to be able to use so you once again can get the glory. God, that each and every one of us will depend on one another and most, most, most specifically the Holy Spirit. That we may be a help to one another and not a hindrance. To lift one another up and not to tear down. Yes. So God, we thank you. Thank you we do bless your name, oh God. Yes, Lord. And we thank you once again for the gifts you yes. have given your church and each and every one of us. As in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah.